हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द डेली करंट अफेयर्स ऑफ फिफ्थ जनवरी सो दीज आर द कंटेंट्स फॉर टुडे एंड द सोर्स इज पीआईबी न्यूज ऑन एयर ऑल इंडिया रेडियो न्यूज एंड पीबीएनएस ऑल आर गवर्नमेंट साइट्स सो द कंटेंट इज वॉट आर विजन फॉर ट्वेंटी फोर्टी सेवन सो देर ऑल्सो विल बी कवरिंग सम मिसलेनियस टॉपिक्स रिलेटेड टू द वाटर मिशन दीज आर द टॉपिक्स विच विल कवर देन इंडिया इज कमिटेड टू एलिमिनेटिंग काला अजार बाई ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री सो विल कवर अबाउट काला अजार एंड वॉट आर द स्टेट्स वेर इट इज मोर लाइक इट इज एंडेमिक एंड द इंडिया फ्रांस थर्टी सिक्स स्ट्रैटेजिक डायलॉग बिगिन्स सो हियर विल डिस्कस द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन इंडिया एंड फ्रांस वॉट आर द एग्रीमेंट्स इन डिफरेंट सेक्टर्स लाइक स्पेस लाइक ट्रेड डिफेंस एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा एंड विल ऑल्सो कवर द फ्रांस मैप बिकॉज uh when two countries are in news so it's better to cover the map there itself then we'll also cover mtcr wasana agreement australia group and ccit because these are the uh, topics uh, which are related here because france is supporting in all these three we'll come to that now modern personalities uh, of modern history that is barindra kumar ghosh his birth anniversary so we'll cover this bind scheme which was in last uh, <coughs> video also it was in news so this time also we'll cover it and uh, nia is also in news today so we'll cover the uh, national investigative agency and the, the recent 2019 bill fine coming to the first topic so india has made major strides in water security so our water vision for 2047 will be a big contribution to amrit kal that's what prime minister narendra modi said at the all india annual states ministers conference on water so here the topic is water vision of 2047 so india has made all these efforts to conserve water that is pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana jal jeevan mission mission amrit sarovar jal shakti abhiyan atal bhujal yojana and national water policy here uh, we will cover this two mission sarovar is not that much required atal bhujal yojana you can cover on your own but these two are very important and the related topic is central ground water authority so we'll cover this central ground water authority what are the legal thing legal provisions and uh, the all the necessary topics related to <coughs> central ground water authority fine so coming to the first scheme that is pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana it consists of three major components implemented by various ministries overall uh, it, it comes under ministry of agriculture but there are three components uh, where different ministries uh, like coordinate fine so first is department of water resources river development and ganga rejuvenation that is ministry of jal shakti so here the component is aibp that is accelerated irrigation benefits program another component is har khet ko pani and these are the sub components all these are coming under this ministry ministry of jal shakti <clears throat> another department is the department of land resources but it, it is under ministry of rural development here another component comes under this uh, particular ministry is water shed development finally under department of agriculture uh, there is another component per drop more crop so the three components comes under three different ministries fine <coughs> fine next now jal jeevan mission also you can go through uh, the details from uh, vikaspedia it is also very good source you can cover for your self study so jal jeevan mission supplies um, nv sages uh, supply 55 liters of water per person per day to every rural household so jal jeevan mission this is rural okay states and uts to be responsible for the creation of water supply infrastructure so that every rural household has a functional tap connection by 2024 so this is rural similarly we have a jal jeevan mission for urban uh, now here it is uh, catering to 500 amrut city so amrut scheme is also in news always you can go through amrut scheme for schemes it is better to follow two sites vikaspedia or arthpedia these two sites are very uh, holistic in content fine next so one related topic uh, i thought of covering here is ground water central ground water authority first of all this ground water authority it, it regulates the ground water thing in india it is a subordinate office of the ministry of water resources okay so remember it is under ministry of water it is not under ministry of agriculture it is under water resources constituted under the epa act of 
environment protection act so this is a environment topic which you go you have to cover from your static environment thing you need to know all the rules which are notified under environment protection act for example economic sensitive zones coastal regulation zones ozone rules all these are regulated under the epa act of 1986 <clears throat> fine so its purpose is to the ground water authority purpose is to regulate and control ground water development and management of the country as well as to ensure its long term sustainability so in in a nutshell it it means it regulates the overall ground water development and management of india now uh, last year 2022 it was in news the authority granted relief to 2069 industries that is extended the last date for applying for no objection certificates from this date to this date for ground water extraction so some guidelines it gave so the guidelines has a pan india applicability it is the guidelines is for not a state specific it is for whole india which was never been there before okay so so problem is we do not have a proper uh, law on ground water there has been a bill but still then uh, there is, there is lot of ambiguity uh, behind this ground water thing so the guidelines are prohibition of industries the guidelines prohibit new industry and mining projects in over exploited zones and makes it mandatory for existing industries commercial units and big housing societies to take no objection certificate they have to take this noc fine it 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 prohibits them to take this noc but it you can't take fine the new guidelines says it exemption the domestic consumers the rural drinking water schemes the armed forces farmers and micro and small enterprises that withdrew up to 10 cubic meters per day are exempted from the requirement of a noc these are these things are not required they are like the domestic consumers and plus all these mentioned Uh, it is not required for them to take a noc the noc is issued for a period of 2 to 5 years depending on the users and category of the area in which they are located uh, compensation it provides a minimum <coughs> it provides a minimum environmental compensation of 1 lakh on industrial mining and infrastructure users for extracting groundwater without a no obligation certificate so this this guidelines you just just need to know for prelims okay abstraction charges all residential apartments group housing societies government water supply agencies in urban areas would be required to pay ground water abstraction charges fine okay now the next topic india is committed to eliminating kala azar by 2023 this is what the union health minister said now you need to know what is kala azar so this is particularly a prelims thing they can ask you about kala azar like what kind of uh, disease it is a protozoan disease parasitic disease it is also called black fever uh, spread by sand fly bites the uh, the flies are infected with the parasite called this is the name leishmania donovan kala azar or black azar this point is very important because you need to know it is endemic yes it is endemic to india but in which states it is endemic to bihar jharkhand up west bengal with an estimated of this much population at its risk now in indian express there is also a news in july 17 2022 kala azar or black fever were detected in west bengal and in that particular news it was mentioned it is endemic to bihar jharkhand up and west bengal fine <clears throat> so this uh, these are the points uh, which are uh, like mostly enough for prelims so you need to know ki what kind of disease and the area where it is endemic okay moving to the next topic uh, the 36th india and france strategic dialogue begins from today fine so first of all uh, some historical background on some factual data on this so if france is the first country in which we initiated a strategic dialogue after our 1998 nuclear test when france refused to impose bilateral sanctions on us at that point of time in 1998 after the pokhran nuclear test so sanctions france did not put sanctions so so from that point of time 
India started or initiated a strategic dialogue. Okay, and defense. Back in two thousand fifteen, agreement for building six Scorpion submarines was made with France. Now, uh, technology sharing always happens. Acquisition of short range missiles, radar, everything. Even in Rafale. Okay, we bought Rafale from France. Now, two uh, joint exercise also happens. One is for Air Force. One is for Army. For army, it is Shakti exercise, and for air force, it is Garuda. So these are very common uh, prelim stuff which they may ask. The government to government agreement for thirty six Rafale uh, aircrafts has also taken place. Now in space, <coughs> in space earlier France assisted India to set up Sri Hari Kota launch site. So in Sri Hari Kota, from there uh, the launching happens, right? So France has also assisted India before. Now. Mission Gaganyaan is in news, which we have covered uh, in January second uh, current affairs. So France is also collaborating, collaborating in the sense it is helping, helping in technology sharing and uh, something like that. It is not a pure, like uh, uh, like uh, Gaganyaan is an indigenous thing, right? But still, then a country like France is helping. So there is an agreement also. Now in energy, energy or in environment, there is something called International Solar Alliance. This is also we have covered. In our last current affair class, so Inter Solar Alliance is spearheaded by India. Okay, from two thousand fifteen, sixteen. So uh, the Inter Solar Alliance set in motion jointly by India and France. Okay, now France has also offered uh, this much money in solar projects for developing countries, and Inter Solar Alliance is for investment of our transition to solar energy. <coughs> fine now this is where uh, we get a lot of prelims question okay so what has happened is in support and strategic ties between india and france france has been supporting india's claim for permanent membership at the UNC, unc so india is demanding for a permanent we have five members in un as permanent members so india is also demanding for a permanent membership and france is also supporting the india's claim France support was vital in India's accession to MTCR, Wassenaar arrangement, Australia group. Okay, so here we need to know all these things. France continues to support India's wait for accession to NSG. Even India wants to join NSG, but India is not a part, and France is supporting. India and France have consistently condemned terrorism and have resolved to work. together for the adoption of ccit comprehensive convention on international terrorism now this the ccit it was they get the resolution was moved by india in un okay at the un during 1996 and this ccit was about com, com, convention on Uh, comprehensive convention on international terrorism so here they defined ki there should not be any um, good terrorist or bad terrorist terrorism is terrorism right but it it is yet to be signed it is still not signed by the country it is not into force because there is a clear division among countries between they are telling good terrorist versus bad terrorist but india is telling ki there is no there should be no uh, like uh, differentiation between good or bad when it comes to terrorism and this thing and in this particular thing france is also supporting fine now we'll go through mtcr wassenaar arrangement and australia group coming first to mtcr see mtcr full form is missile control missile technology control regime it is basically a multilateral export control regime export control okay so it was started in 1987 by g7 countries G7 is USA, UK, uh, Canada, Germany, Italy, Japan, and France. 
so basically what happens is now there are 35 members there are 35 members india is also a member india is also a member so the work was to it and basically it is an informal it is not a very formal uh, uh, organization informal uh, to limit main work is to limit the proliferation to limit the proliferation of missiles and missile technology missile technology okay and india became a member in 2016 very recent it started in 2000 1987 okay So basically, this uh, the uh, this uh, MTCR was started to check the proliferation of missiles and missile technology, in particular, the unmanned delivery systems. To check the to check the unmanned delivery systems for nuclear weapons for nuclear weapons, in particular. the systems that could carry a payload of 500 kg to a range of 300 km to a range of 300 km okay that is what uh, mtcr is and india is a member now coming to the wasner group wasner group uh, Uh, sorry was an arrangement so here in this arrangement india is also a member very recent india became a member of was an arrangement so now it is also in news why because was an arrangement from 1st january 2023 this year india <coughs> is holding the chairman india chairmanship okay before it was israel before it was uh, sorry ireland not israel it is ireland okay so before is not required but you need to know who is uh, now in particular the chairman now what is this arrangement what it, what it is all about basically it is also a control export to control regime now what do you mean by export control for mtcr also we read export control means to control export on something you need to control export on something okay it was in missile technology now in uh, mtcr was in missile technology now wasan arrangement is a export control regime fine here what they do is export control regime they will exchange Information countries will exchange information. If two countries are a part of WA, was an arrangement. They will exchange information on transfers of conventional weapons, which are very conventional, conventional weapons, and dual. This is the key word: dual use goods technologies. Dual use goods and technologies. Now the key word is this. So basically, it is export control when two countries are exporting. They will uh, have a information on conventional weapons and dual use. Now, what do you what do you mean by dual use? Dual use means a particular good or a technology which is used for multiple purposes. Okay, usually peaceful purposes and military. Fine. So this is what. was an arrangement is all about now it was established in 1996 its secretariat is in vienna vienna is in austria okay uh, recently india australia after 27 years the external affairs minister of india and australia met we have covered this we have covered the map of austria in a january 2nd or january 3rd or current affairs fine so india is also a member of uh wa mostly in 2017 or 18 india is a member it is 2017 okay 
so mostly it has uh, 42 members 42 members mostly they are mostly from european union and nato also india in 2007 presently 2023 india is a uh, like it is uh, holding the chairmanship okay fine so i guess that this much is enough for uh, this thing and all the decisions here are taken by consensus there is to happen a plenary meeting it will uh, all the countries will come sit and they will take decision on consensus consensus not on majority vote okay fine <clears throat> next next is australia group in australia group also india is a member very recent in 2018 2018 india became a member 17 and 18 was important because um, on 17 it became western arrangement and on 18 it became the group uh, the member of australia group now coming to australia group australia group it is also an informal forum it is also an informal forum now what it does it is also to ensure that the country's exports see these are all export control regimes countries exports do not contribute to the development of so the keyword is development of this is the keyword chemical or biological weapons chemical or biological weapons so it deals with anything what you are exporting make sure ki that uh, that particular technology or that particular good or anything which you are exporting it does not lead to uh, development of chemical and biological weapons now this was established in 1985 okay so chronology wise 1985 1987 1996 you need to remember in this way okay fine so it was established in 1985 and india is also a member india became member in 2018 india became the 43rd country to join at that point of time now just remember here china pakistan iran and north korea are not members these are not members of australia group okay now because the name is australia so australia manages the secretariat australia manages the secretariat just remember okay but india and all now the thing is we we cover this because it is in news because france is supporting now your work is to cover nsg nsg question already asked in 2015 the members related to a members there was a prelims question india still is not a part of nsg okay nuclear supplies group so you can cover nsg on your own it's available in the internet okay now let's move on to the next thing now because france is in news so it's better to cover the mapping part here itself okay the mapping part now if you see where is france france is here okay now first of all the border countries let's go to the border spain okay brussels that is belgium italy germany Bern. Bern is Switzerland. So these are the and another also Andorra. This is also small, very small uh, uh, country. So just remember the countries. Now English Channel and Bay of Biscay. Okay. I think this much is enough. Okay. Next. 
now modern history personalities in news today is barendra kumar ghosh now barendra kumar ghosh is a was a revolutionary during his initial youth time so remembering the great revolutionary freedom fighter on his birth anniversary he formed the secret revolutionary group jugantar very famous in our modern history static topic under the fitness club in bengal and played an important role in recruiting young revolutionary along with bhaga jatin is also very famous in some other day we'll cover bhaga jatin okay <clears throat> now coming to some important events of barendra kumar ghosh which will help you in prelims and plus both mains answer writing enrichment coming to the revolutionary activities 1906 he started the publishing jugantar which was a bengali weekly and a revolutionary organization named jugantar soon followed now jugantar was formed from the inner circle of anushilan samiti anushilan samiti was also a revolutionary group very important and it is available in uh, the content is available in books also and it started preparation for armed militancy activities to out the british from indian soil now barindranath and jatindranath mukherji now jatindranath mukherji he was very famous and was known as bhaga jatin okay in some other class we'll cover this so uh, barindranath and jatindranath were instrumental in recruitment of many young revolutionaries across bengal the revolutionaries formed the maniktala group you have to remember this for prelims maniktala group is a place in kolkata it was a secret place where they started manufacturing bombs and collected arms and ammunition so in that place they started collecting or making bombs okay now comes the case name that is the alipore bomb case see there are lots of conspiracy cases so you need to remember the case names because last year one case came lahore conspiracy case or something came this is the alipore conspiracy case the other name is called maniktola case it is maniktola case so what happened is uh, following the attempted killing kingsford who, who was a britisher he was uh, like there was an attempt to kill him by khudiram bose and prafulla chakki on 1908 or uh, th- 30 april then the police intensified its investigation which led to the arrest of barindranath and aurobindo ghosh okay on 2nd may 1908 along with many of his comrades so they got arrested then the trial is known as alipur bomb case or the maniktola conspiracy it initially sentenced aurobindo ghosh barindra ghosh Ulaskar Ratha to death. However, the sentence was reduced to life imprisonment, and Barin was deported to cellular jail in Andaman in 1909, along with other convicts. In cellular jail, he was locked up beside V.D. Savarkar. V.D. Savarkar was also at that point of time in jail, and he successfully managed to flee cellular jail in 1915. But he uh, managed to flee the jail, but he was again caught up in Puri, Odisha. Now his later life. he was caught up and again he was uh, like released after 5 years he was released and returned to kolkata to start a career in journalism but he did not continue then in 1923 he left for pondicherry where his elder brother by the way aurobindo ghosh is his elder brother okay so aurobindo ghosh had formed the sri aurobindo ashram because aurobindo ghosh after 1910 he also left the politics and became a spiritual okay so in pondicherry which which is called as oroville there is a place called oroville which is named after the uh, oromindo ghosh because his followers um, propagated his ideas his spiritual ideas so he uh, left for pondicherry and he joined the oromindo ashram remember it is by oromindo ghosh now some books written by barendra kumar ghosh dwipanater banshi pathar ingit amara आत्मा कथा अग्निजुग ऋषि नाज नारायण द टेल ऑफ माई एग्जाइल श्री और ओपिंदो सो रिमेंबर लाइक टू टू थ्री यू कैन रिमेंबर फ्रॉम हियर फॉर प्रिलिम्स नाउ पाथर इनगेट इज इम्पोर्टेंट बिकॉज देर इज एनदर बुक ऑन सिमिलर साउंडिंग दैट इज पाथर दाबी नो पाथर दाबी वॉज रिटर्न बाई शरद चंद्र चट्टोपाध्याय रिमेंबर Pathar Dabi is a book about secret society named Pathar Dabi whose goal is to free India from British rule and Sarachandra Chattopadhyay played a great role in making a revolutionary mind 
in young indian so it was a very it was a book on revolutionary activities now pathar davi by sarachandra chatopadhyay but pathar ingit is by barendra kumar ghosh okay now coming to the next is bind scheme now bind scheme we have covered in our last uh, uh, last class or uh, the 4th january because it was uh, again it's again in news it is related to broadcasting uh, infrastructure and network development basically uh, we have a public broadcaster was prasar bharati now from prasar bharati only the news are taken in this particular current affairs series so to develop to modernize the broadcasting and uh, to make it uh, accessible to hilly areas left wing extremism areas uh, this bind scheme is uh, the government has brought this scheme it's a very new scheme so that's it you can cover uh, uh, prasar bharati in my last class it is there is a prasar bharati act okay it's a statutory body okay now on january 5 nia conducted searches at six locations and arrested two op- operatives in shimoga isis conspiracy case so in national investigative agency becomes important so it is basically in 2008 after the attacks mumbai attacks it uh, it was brought by the government it is nothing but a central counter terrorism law enforcement agency of india to investigate all offenses affecting the sovereignty security and integrity of india it includes friendly relations with foreign states against atomic and nuclear facilities smuggling of arms drugs fake currency notes infiltration across borders everything headquarters is in delhi and it comes under ministry of home affairs now this agency is empowered to deal with investigation and terror related crimes across the states without special permission from the state state permission is also not required investigating agency can enter and deal with the investigation of terror related crimes okay in states so without having to get permission from the states the agency investigates terror offenses waging war against the country offenses on nuclear facilities etc so its aim is to become a professional investigating agency matching global standards okay it comes under ministry of home affairs now recently current affairs related to this is there is a amendment act now the act was amended the 2008 act was amended to bring some new things it allowed the agency to investigate the following new offenses like human trafficking is also included counterfeit currency bank notes related offenses sale or manufacture of prohibited arms offenses under explosive substances act cyber terrorism is also included because it is a very new thing nowadays which is happening now the amendments also expands the jurisdiction of nia so it has expanded the jurisdiction of nia how now it has the authority to investigate offenses that are committed outside the indian territory okay so you outside the indian territory if any offenses is conducted related to terror or something or all these things nia has the authority to investigate however subject to international treaties and domestic laws of other nations okay so it also allows central government to constitute special courts to conduct trials of scheduled offenses accordingly the government will have the power to designate sessions courts as a special courts it means there are session courts okay subordinate courts so they can be also designated by the government to uh, work as a special courts under this nia act but after after consulting with the chief justice of the high court under which the sessions court functions but yes the government has to consult the chief justice of the high court the act also authorizes the state government to designate special courts it means special courts can be designated by center it can be also designated by state the government can appoint more than special court in that area more than more than one special court okay currently there are 38 special nia courts across the country and across the united uh, sorry union territories the special courts judges are appointed by government of india in consultation with the high court chief justice of that area this we have covered here also the trials of nia special courts have precedented over the trial of the accused in any other case in any other court so it will have precedence if the tri- if uh, same thing is the same case is happening in other uh, k- courts also but the nia special courts will always have the um, 
precedence over that okay fine that's it for today uh, thank you